Let me ask you a question. If you were telling someone the last words that you were ever going to tell them, and it was the most important words that you were going to say, you only had a couple of words to say, what would you tell them? Well, this is the reason that I'm asking you that question. Because in the book of Revelation, one of the most difficult books to understand in the whole Bible, and for some people, one of the scariest books to read in the whole Bible, in the last chapter, chapter 22, Jesus, who is giving John the revelation, tells him these last words. And it's something to think about because he speaks about the false prophet. He speaks about the Antichrist. He speaks about the mark of the beast. He speaks about the lake of fire. So out of all those things, you would probably never expect for the last words to Jesus that he was saying in the book of Revelation, you would probably never expect for the last words to be these. Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 10 through 16. Today I'm joined with my brother Marnus. He's all the way from South Africa, currently living in Mexico, and he's here with me today, and we're going to be sharing on Revelation chapter 22, verse 10 through 16. Look at some of the last words that the resurrected Jesus is telling John in the Revelations. Revelation 22, verse 10 through 16, look what he says. And he said to me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. What time? The last days, the coming of the Lord. And then look what he tells him, and this is what I want you to focus on. Let the evildoers still do evil, and let the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. And look at the whole reason behind this, verse 12. Behold, I am coming soon. This is Jesus speaking. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me. What is recompense? My reward. Or people will get the fruit of their actions. That's what he's saying. He says, I am bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. I am the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I was talking to Marnus a second ago and I was telling him about that video that that little Nas X did when I think he gets like crucified and he acts like Jesus or something like that. And everybody's doing reactions on that video. And I, I understand why. I can understand the outrage. But then when I think about it, I'm like, I really don't care. The world is going to do what the world is going to do. Sinful people are going to do what sinful people are going to do. And the reason I wanted to read you in Revelation 22, especially verse 11 through 13, is because Jesus is saying, let the wicked be wicked. Let the righteous be righteous. Let the vile be vile. And then look what Jesus says. He says, I'm coming with my reward in my hand. Do you know what the important thing is for us to do in these last days? Is to live a life that's right with God. And when you're living a life that's right with God, you are going to be blessed. But if you let your life be swayed or you let your life be dictated by the actions of other people, then you're not going to make it. Scripture is saying, be righteous if you're righteous. Be holy if you're holy. The word holy doesn't mean you're perfect or flawless. The word holy means that you're separated for the Lord. It means that you're living for God. Is there anything you want to share on that, Marnus? Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> in the music industry, in the Hollywood scene, like everywhere, there's a reason these people are being promoted, and it's because of they push the things of this world. Yeah. So that there's a reason why they're that big. So one thing we have to remember as Christians is in the last days, it's just going to get worse, but we shouldn't be discouraged by that, but instead we should be encouraged <clears throat> by the fact that our Lord of Lords and King of Kings is returning for His church. We are His Right, and he's coming back for us, and we must let that encourage us. The Bible makes it very clear that end time prophecy was given to encourage us as believers, not to discourage us. Because I feel like a lot of people, when they read end time prophecy, when people speak on it, they have a sense of fear, mm. they feel afraid, and they're like, stop with the fear mongering. But these things should only scare you if you're not in Christ. That's right. For a Christian, this is one of the most encouraging things that you can read. That if we continue in God's ways, if we continue walking in the Spirit, we know that Jesus is coming back with rewards for us as believers. Amen. And the reason it's so enc encouraging is because of what Marna said. He said that the Lord says, He promises that He's coming with His reward in His hand. You know, Scripture says that everything we do for the Lord will never be in vain. Scripture says that all those who put their faith in God will never be put to shame. Because sometimes it can feel like that. It can feel like, man, I feel like I'm the only one living for God. I feel like I'm the only one trying. I feel like I'm the only one having faith. Everybody else around me is a hypocrite. Everybody else around me is being false, being fake. Everyone else around me is doing what the world is doing. And it can feel discouraging sometimes that you're the only one living for God. But God is saying, no, I'm coming with my reward in my hand. So keep doing what you're doing. But let's continue to read, Marnus. Look what scripture says here. Verse 14, 
It says, blessed, it, blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life, that they may enter the city by the gates. Talking about the new Jerusalem. It's talking about when we go to heaven. And then look what he says. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Do you want to share on that, Marnus? Yes, definitely. So firstly, we see <clears throat> that the uh, robes we wash and we know that in the Bible, white is the color of righteousness. So our robes will be washed. The Bible makes it very clear that we will be clothed in white linen Amen. because our sins will be removed from us. We're no longer are sinful. The Bible says that we are no longer sinners, but we're saints. And that's the key thing. The Bible says as far as the east is from the west, God has removed our sins from us. Our sins are no longer a part of our identity. So firstly, we get justification, which means we've been forgiven. But here it says we will be continued to be washed because yes, we are sanctified, we receive the Holy Spirit, but then we continue walking in righteousness. We continue by being sanctified by the Holy Spirit in our lives. And then we also see that this is the group that's inside that will make it into the new Jerusalem. So do you want to touch on the group that will be outside? Yeah, well, pay attention because verse 4, 15 tells us, outside are the dogs. You might say dogs, like puppy dogs, <laughs> like uh, 101 Dalmatian dogs. No. Have you ever heard the scripture that says that a man that returns to his foolishness is like a dog that returns to his vomit? The reason that it's saying outside are the dogs, it's given reference to people who are living in the flesh, people who are not following the Lord, people who are not living according to scripture. And let me remind you again, I know you're not perfect. I know that you make mistakes. I know that you have errors. I know that you have battles and temptations, but that's not what this is talking about. This is not talking to someone who's fighting the good fight, running the good race, living a life of holiness, practicing repentance. That's not who this is talking about. This is talking about people who are living by their instincts, people who are just living and doing what they want to do. They're dogs. They're always in the vomit. They're always going back to the ways of the world. They really don't care about the things of God. Now, I don't know about you, but I live in a neighborhood. I live in the hood, right? And it's something about the hood. You always see dogs walking up and down the street, right? They don't have an owner. They don't have a house. They're just walking up and down the streets, eating out of trash cans, eating out of trash. Scripture is saying outside are the dogs. Talking about people who are not living for the Lord, but people who are living for the deeds of the flesh. And not only that, but it says, and the sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. That's why it's so important as a Christian to live a life that's separated for the Lord. You know, people say, should I get married or I shouldn't get married? Well, let me tell you something. Scripture tells us what you should do. If you're in a relationship where you're practicing fornication, or I'm not even going to touch about an adulterous relationship. If it's adultery, there's not even nothing to say about that. You just need to stop that adulterous relationship. But if you're in a relationship with fornication is being practiced, relations before marriage, Scripture says, look, if you're acting in an improper way with the person that you're with, get married. But then, I want to tell you this, but if you don't love the person, then the only logical thing to do is, maybe you need to separate yourself from that person. If you don't love them, and if you don't want to marry them, then why are you in that relationship just practicing fornication, failing the Lord like that? But if you do love the person, then honor the Lord. And scripture tells us to get married because outside are the dogs, outside are the sorcerers. Can you imagine sorcery is compared to sexual immorality? People say, oh, it's natural, it's natural. There's nothing wrong with it. No, the Bible says outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers and the idolaters. And everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I remember seeing a skit when I was young one time of a man who was sitting on a chair and the chair represented the throne of his heart. And he was telling God, okay, sit down, God, sit down on the throne of my heart. So Jesus would sit down and he'd be like, all right, this is what I want to do. And, and th these are the plans that I have for you. But then the man would kind of scoop Jesus over and say, oh, never mind, never mind. And he would try to, he would kind of try to sit back on the throne of his heart. But then Jesus would look at him and say, hey, are you going to let me sit on the throne of your heart or not? And then he said this, well, I, I just can't make the choice. I just can't make the choice. Can't you just make the choice for me? Because I can't make a choice. And Jesus told him, you just made the choice. Whenever people don't make the choice to live for God, they might think, but I'm in the middle. I'm stuck in the middle. No, 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 no. In the Christian life, there's no such thing as stuck in the middle. In the eyes of God, either you're hot or you're cold. There's no such thing as being stuck in the middle. Either you're living for the Lord or you're not living for the Lord. And then look what verse 16 says. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, 
the bright and morning star. In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm the one that has authority, and I'm serious about this. Is there anything else you want to share, Jock? Amarnas? Yeah, definitely. Here where it says those, these practice these sins. And one thing we have to remember is there's a difference between struggling with sin and practicing it willfully, like continue living in sin. Even Jesus told the Pharisees, you honor me, you worship me with your mouth, but your hearts are far from me. So as a Christian, there's no in-between. You're either hot or you're cold. You cannot say, okay, I'll worship Jesus with my lips, but then your heart is far from me. If you're a true Christian, you might struggle with sin, and that's part of the Christian life, mm. but you're not going to willfully continue living in it because we've been transformed by the Holy Spirit. The Bible makes it clear that if we love God, we will obey His commandments because that's what the transformation of the Holy Spirit does. He completely turns our life around. He gives us a new desire, a new heart. And if you haven't received that new desire, then I want to encourage you, give your life to Christ today. Repent of your sins and you can know your sins will be forgiven and you will be ready for the return of Christ. Amen. So remember what Jesus said in the last book of Revelation. He says, let the wicked be wicked and let those who are practicing righteousness keep doing right. Don't put your eyes on the people who are not living for God. Put your eyes on Jesus Christ because the Lord is returning with his reward in his hand. And I believe with all my heart that when you live for the Lord, you will hear those words of Jesus when he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You believe you're going to hear those words, Mark? Amen. I believe and I hope that I'm going to hear those words also. So God bless you. I hope this video was a blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I post weekly videos that I hope and pray will be a great encouragement to your life. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or for this video, you can do so in two ways. The first way is called Super Thanks. That's something that's at the bottom of your screen. It's a feature that if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or for this video, you can do so by giving a super thanks. Those are always greatly appreciated. The second way is called channel memberships. It's for my subscribers who want to show a monthly form of appreciation. You can do so by clicking the link in my description. It's called channel memberships and you get special stickers, special badges, and access to archive videos for channel members. And before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos. I hope that they will continue to be a great encouragement to your life. God bless you.